Peter Best's music from both The Heroes and Heroes 2 The Return is now on sale on CD and cassette from leading music shops. Eddie Murphy and Dudley Moore in Best Defense, Wednesday at 10.40 on Anglia. At 20 to 11 this evening, the government and opposition engage in a light-hearted battle of wits in the cross-question Christmas quiz. Because the lady loves Cadbury's milk tray. Beautifully done. Sesame Street. Certain, um, no. Nice party. Shame about the cutlery. We could have died. But now, there's new sun progress. You only need half a dose because it's a concentrated dishwasher powder. Its active oxygen system is like dozens of hands helping you to give everything a sparkling personal touch. Hmm. Hmm. Uh -uh. With some progress, you're in good hands. I don't think this is going to work. You may be right. We, we don't seem to have much in common. I know. I hate opera, you hate jazz. And I loathe modern art. It's my job. So, about the only thing we do have in common is... Our tasting coffee. Golden roasted, richer, smoother, Nescafe Gold Blend. Hello. I want to see you. The Broadcasting Complaints Commission has considered complaints about the allergy business, an edition of Granada Television's World in Action shown on ITV in October 1990. The program investigated clinical ecology, an approach to medicine which holds that allergies are a major cause of ill health. It focused on the work of the private Brakespear Hospital in Hertfordshire. Miss McCarthy complained that she had been unfairly treated in the program. She had agreed to be filmed as a patient of the hospital for a news report about a visit by the Duchess of York. Instead, she was shown in a different program against a commentary suggesting that psychiatric disorders rather than allergies might be the real problem for many patients. 
This had damaged her reputation. The Commission do not uphold the complaint. The Commission considered a separate complaint from Mrs. Holden, who was shown among several others, apparently visitors or members of staff, in the hospital sequence. She complained that, as a patient, the later reference to patients' possible psychiatric disorders had damaged her reputation. The Commission do not consider that the reference could be taken to apply personally to any individual who happened to be included in a general background shot. They do not uphold the complaint. The Commission's adjudications on some other complaints about the programme are subject to judicial review. A copy of the adjudications on the complaints from Ms McCarthy and Mrs Holden can be obtained by writing to the Commission who consider complaints of unfairness and infringement of privacy. If you would like a copy, please write, enclosing a stamped addressed envelope, to Broadcasting Complaints Commission, P.O. Box 333, London, SW1W, OBQ. Now on Anglia, the main evening news with Alistair Stewart and Trevor MacDonald. <laughs> crisis, building societies devise plan to stop repossession. CBI tell government recession continues, the Chancellor's wrong. IRA bomb and fears of more paralyse London's trains. Esther Ranson wins a quarter of a million pounds libel damages. And car crime dominates a new surge in lawlessness. Good evening. The building societies, under pressure from the government, have come up with the basis of a scheme to ease the mortgage crisis and cut repossession. It follows talks today with ministers who set a 48-hour deadline for the lenders to come up with a solution. But they were warned there'd be no extra government cash. The plan is for housing associations to take over mortgages and charge rent. Building societies would then receive payment from the associations. The chief executive of the Leeds Building Society, Mr Mike Blackburn, said his industry had been given two days to solve a problem the government had spent two years creating. And over the page is lot 11. Some of more than 80,000 properties repossessed this year went under the auctioneer's hammer today. Homes taken from those who've fallen so far behind with their mortgages that their homes have been taken away. First, second, third time on condition of 38,000 pounds. Behind such sales lie stories like that of Christopher Palmer, who has written to the Prime Minister to protest at the way lenders took back his house six months ago. To say it was traumatic uh, would be an understatement. Um, I've got to say that um, for ourselves, um, if it wasn't for friends and colleagues who uh, helped us out uh, through this period, um, obviously the situation would have been a damn sight worse. For a party which for so long extolled the virtues of home ownership, the collapse of the housing market is politically highly damaging. So those who gathered at the Treasury today were under pressure. The deal agreed will mean that security benefits handed out to help with mortgages will go straight to the building societies. At present, the money often goes elsewhere. And societies have been given two days to finalise their own rescue package, the outline of which is already clear. Properties will be transferred to housing associations. The benefit of that, of course, is that the occupier then becomes a tenant of the housing association and so eligible for housing benefit, which will make it easier for him or her to pay the rent and so you end up with a much more satisfactory position both for the occupier and of course for the lender. Pilot schemes are in operation. The Beander family home in Halifax is one example. Bought and then rented back by the Yorkshire Metropolitan Housing Association. At the beginning we were on the social security and the social security paid the mortgage for us. And then uh, yeah. my husband took a job then. And we had to pay it ourselves then so we just couldn't afford to pay it then. Well, my wage didn't cover it all after buying all the food. The Labour Party says that scheme should be applied nationally with the taxpayer funding the scheme. It will cost the taxpayer some money, but it's nevertheless a cheaper and better option than having to put that same family into bed and breakfast. The Liberal Democrats say mortgage companies should pay the difference. 
There's a gap that has to be financed, but in the long term, the building society can cover that. And I think we should recognise the building societies this year are making very, very large profits. And some building societies are making embarrassingly large profits. So you're now, saying the building society should finance it themselves? Well, building societies have got uh, are one of the elements that got us into this problem in the first place. The government also believes the building societies hold the key and will help. Now, all all uh, experience is that people who lend money on property in the commercial or indeed in the domestic field try to help people in trouble. That has always happened, there's no exception to it as far as I know, and all the building societies that uh, we saw today express their acute concern at people who don't tell them they're in trouble until it's too late, don't come and ask for help, and therefore, and then just disappear. It's estimated that by the end of the year, some 260,000 people will be six months or more in arrears with their mortgage repayments. And the opposition parties claim that the kind of measures discussed at the Treasury today will only help a few of those people. Peter Allen, News at 10, Westminster. Manufacturing output, factory output, fell again in October by a half of 1%, according to official figures today. The Shadow Trade Secretary, Mr Gordon Brown, said they made a mockery of government claims about a strong end-of-year recovery. The chief economic advisor to the employers' organisation, the CBI, said it could be 1993, long after the election, before the economy is back to where it was when the recession began in the mid-1990s. The latest fall in manufacturing output has heightened fears that the economy is again sliding into recession. The engineering sector is particularly hard hit, with layoffs and continuing falls in orders. Even the sale of used cars on credit finance fell significantly in November compared to the same month last year, an indication of how depressed the consumer market has become. This is clearly seen in Britain's high streets, where the latest retail sales figures show only a slight improvement, mainly due to heavy price discounting, to tempt shoppers to spend more. Here in Oxford, like many other towns in the south, there is caution as Christmas approaches. My husband has lost his job, so we're on one wage at the moment, so just fine for my parents and that's it, really. We all seem to be buying smaller Christmas presents for each other this year. We haven't got so much money to spend. The Chancellor has been bullish all year about prospects for economic recovery. In the budget last March, he forecast that the recovery would begin around the middle of this year. By September, he said it was very clear that we were coming out of recession. And last month, after improved gross domestic product figures, he told ITN that in a technical sense, the recession has ended. Some now believe Mr. Lamont is being too optimistic. For 1992, his forecast did look to be on the optimistic side. It now looks as if the position internationally is quite a lot worse than he assumed when he last made his forecast. And that means that we're going to have much less growth next year. What does this mean as far as the recession is concerned? Well, what it does mean, I think, is that we're bumping along. The United States is also bumping along and facing a second recession. There's a slowing down of the German economy, and both could mean that Britain remains in difficulty for another year, says the CBI. In the UK, ministers hope for an export and consumer-led recovery. But it's now threatened because overseas orders are falling away. Business leaders say more must be done. Bring Britain back together as a nation that is determined to pick up this trade that is overseas for them. We can't sell on the home market. There's a recession, and we all know that. It's unlikely that Britain's consumers will be dancing for joy over the economy, it may be 1993 before most sectors of industry prove they're on the road to recovery. All London's mainline stations were shut for several hours this morning after an IRA bomb exploded at Clapham Junction. No one was injured by the blast, but thousands of travellers were delayed as police searched other stations. The disruption is estimated to have cost London businesses almost £50 million. The bomb had been planted on a branch line a quarter of a mile north of Clapham Junction Railway Station. Containing less than a pound of high explosives, it was time to go off at the start of the morning rush hour. One train was passing nearby. Passengers felt the blast, so did local residents. Honestly, it was a really terrible bang. And you get, obviously you've got two shutdown stations on the world in one bed, and you have both got up together sort of thing, you know. Jumped, jumped out of bed straight away. Well, it shook the flat. Oh, it? yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. Oh, wake the dead up, I was trying to get the, the bang of it. How big an explosion was it? Well, it sounded to me, because I was in the last war, 
It sounds to me almost like a thousand pound bomb going off. Detectives combed the area for bomb fragments. Then above them on the embankment, railway staff started filling in the crater. And by this afternoon, a new section of line was being laid to get trains running as soon as possible. Today's explosion, there was a 20 minute warning, was designed to cause disruption more than destruction. And the terrorist tactics paid off, causing chaos. British Rail shut all eight mainline stations, cutting into city services from across the country and creating misery for half a million commuters. Many managed to make it to work anyway. I'm about, uh, about an hour late. What do you think about all this? Well, I think it's awful. I mean, <laughs> but we can't let them beat us, can they? Also badly hit were the capital shops, already having to battle to persuade people to spend their money. At Brent Cross, retailers had already lost £5 million after Saturday's takings were wiped out by firebombs. Small devices, easily placed and financially devastating. This is obviously a peak time of year for, for retailers uh, and with the end of the recession hopefully in sight, uh, retailers are depending very heavily on, good, uh, on a good Christmas this year. And clearly this sort of uh, disruption is having a damaging effect. In Manchester, police investigating the recent spate of fire bombings at the Arndale Centre are anxious to identify these two men seen on an in-house video. Both were carrying large holdalls, and police are anxious to trace them, if only to rule them out of their inquiries. Police searching for those behind all the recent IRA attacks are being hampered by the fact that, as proved at the St Albans bomb, the provisionals appear now to be using young, inexperienced operatives with no criminal background, of which there could be up to half a dozen in this country, people able to live and work in a local community and plant devices often at weekends without attracting undue suspicion. Today's bomb achieved its objective, which was to cause massive disruption here in London and has prompted detectives to repeat their warning to people to be vigilant in the run-up to Christmas. Robin White, News at 10, Central London. Esther Ranson, presenter of That's Life on BBC television and founder of Childline, was awarded a quarter of a million pounds libel damages against a People newspaper today. The paper had alleged that she'd kept quiet about a teacher she knew to be a potential child abuser. Esther Ranson jumped for joy for the photographers after this afternoon's verdict, which she described as a complete vindication. It means that I know that that wicked, terrible article is now dead and buried, and that the children and the families who have trusted me can go on trusting me, knowing that I would never, ever let a child be a moment in danger if I could protect them. The People had published this story claiming that Miss Ranson had protected an alleged paedophile, Alex Standish, who'd helped expose child abuse at Crookham Court School in Berkshire. Standish had gone on to teach at Cannock School in Kent, where it was discovered that he'd written pornography about young boys described in court as a dangerous, sadistic fantasy. Esther Ranson told the court she'd alerted the police, who told her to do no more, they would investigate. Richard Stott, then editor of The People, said he regarded that as a gross error of judgment. He believed Miss Ranson should have alerted the school authorities at once and had Standish removed. But the newspaper went on to accuse her of using the children as bait for a paedophile. Representing Miss Ranson, Richard Hartley QC described that as a very nasty, wicked and malicious attack on the That's Life presenter. For Esther Ranson, her courtroom victory means she can continue her work with Childline. It means that I can carry on with the work we have to do to go on protecting children from cruelty, to go on...